Gateway Rook 85. Yeah, I'm in the car heading up to the cabin for a late winter trip. Uh, got some seed. I'm going to put some clover seed down in that landing area, that area that the loggers clear to bring the logs up. And uh, I got some from that uh, the POA Select company, which uh, was uh, kind enough to give me uh, an acre's worth. So I'm going to go head up and uh, get that in. I'll talk about that a little bit later in the video. We're just going to have some fun. This is going to kind of be a little bit of an indoor video since we just got five inches of snow up there, I think, last night. So we'll hope the Cherokee can dig through the snow. We don't have any issues with that. But uh, probably spend a lot of time inside just messing around. Uh, I got some couple things to hang up, some fishing things to hang up. And, uh, something for the, uh, the Blue Pot Cafe, very special. And uh, we'll go ahead and get that in place. So, uh, so kick back, grab that beverage, grab yourself a soft drink or something harder if you want. A little snack and uh, kick back and enjoy. Let's get up the cat. Allentown area and uh, start to see a little bit of light dusting of snow on the ground in spots by where the sun hits melting, but uh, just a teeny bit. I'm sure we'll be seeing more as we get over and uh, get through the uh, the light tunnel up here and uh, start to get our work our way up to uh, north central Pennsylvania. Here, Buckhorn. This is about the halfway point or so. Just stopped in to get some refreshment. Go in the old Phillies uh, tumbler here, and uh, we'll keep going. Get the phone plugged in and start her up. And the uh, hey, next thing, uh, next thing you'll see, it'll be rolling into Wellsboro. Hang on shortly. Uh, it, was, it was a little exciting, as they say. Uh, just wanted to make sure I didn't go over the edge, make sure I didn't get stuck in a ditch. I do have the Z chains with me, and I didn't put them on, which should have. I definitely should have, just to have that extra comfort. And uh, I will be putting them on before I head down, unless this melts off in the next two days. Now, Wednesday, Thursday, we'll see what it looks like Thursday afternoon. But uh, for now, I parked uh, a little bit away from the cabin. Because believe it or not, that hill uh, right in front of the cabin, when you're trying to turn like that, that can cause some trouble. Steve and I had a, a couple issues with that uh, years ago. So uh, I'm just stopped right next here to the shed. I'm going to put my boots on and uh, get a little workout carrying everything into the cabin. So let's, uh, let's get everything in there. Let's get settled in. Let's get a fire going. And... Uh, I think the biggest thing we got to do is make some dinner today. And uh, I think I, I have some stuff for the mineral pit up there. I'm going to put a little bit down. I'm going to put a, a feed block out for them to help them get through this last little bit of winter. Uh, gosh, at home, I've already cut the lawn once. Now, this was probably 95% leaves I sucked up, but there was there was some grass getting cut. So it's, it's, it's raising and on the side of the house. It faces the sun. It was, it was almost six inches high over there, so uh, nothing like cutting the grass to uh, four or five inches of snow up here. All right, I'm in for now. It's almost three. First day, first Tuesday, I think it's the uh, 7th, maybe, uh, of March. And uh, the old temp check out there looks like we got 39 out and 42 in. When I got here, it was 40 out. And 37 in, so we came up five degrees with our uh, with our heater over there, which is 
I don't know how many times I got to say that was the best thing we did, or one of the best things we did. That solar is, is another, but uh, so we're starting to warm up in here. But before I get comfortable and get relaxed and don't feel like doing anything, uh, let's take a walk over the mineral pit. I got some black ops um, uh, mineral uh, and uh, feed block. So let's go ahead and put those out and uh, we'll get to see if we get the deer in already. And like I said, we could help them with this last little bit. They can make it through another few weeks. Uh, they should have it made. I can get the boots back on and uh, go ahead and, and get that in place and then come back in. Then we'll then we'll kick back a little bit. And I'm kind of hungry, so I'll probably be early dinner, four o'clock or so. And, uh, you know, the old man type dinner. So uh, early time. The, uh, what do they call that? The early bird special. So we'll do that and uh, uh, probably just get into a nice relaxing night. Left at about, oh, it was about 8 this morning. Got here about 2, which is the normal with a few stops. So uh, just looking to kick back. Well, let's head down there. Here's uh, item number one. This is uh, Black Ops. I got this at Walmart. And it's basically a sweet and salty attractant. But it's got selenium in it. Selenium is the key, supposedly, to deer antler growth. So I'm going to put this on there. I got some more stuff I'm going to put out on Thursday when I'm ready to leave. But first we'll put this out. And I got one of these blocks also. This is a Black Ops block. Uh, basically a protein block. And it has like a sweet smell to it. Uh, it was kind of in the car for a day and a half or so. It smells kind of like berryish to me. It's got a little bit of chunks of corn in there I can see, but not many. But uh, I read the uh, ingredient list. It's pretty good. And uh, again, it has selenium in it, which helps with antler growth, helps with fawns and development of fawns, which is going on right now. So uh, let's get over to pit, put this in so we get back. It's a little windy out. I hope you can hear me over the gusts. But uh, let's go. There's the protein block and the uh, the Black Ops uh, mineral down. And I'm sure from the smell of this, it's not uh, Lucky Buck smellish, but I have a feeling uh, I'll probably get some pictures on the camera. If not tonight, probably tomorrow morning. I get them a couple times a day. Well, time to head back to the cabin. I wonder if you noticed uh, another stormy hat made in Michigan. And uh, pick this one up at Tractor Supply, twelve fifty, and uh, they go for almost fifty dollars. So quite a nice discount, and it is warm as anything wool, and probably about the closest uh, I'll get to ever wearing a fedora is this. So, uh, well, I'm gonna get back there. I'm gonna get some other things put away, straightened up, and uh, kind of get relaxed. I'm getting hungry. I know that. I had a few bars today, but. Nothing major, so uh, I can go back and have a nice chicken cheesesteak tonight. That sounds pretty good, doesn't it? Chips, pickles. Come on, let's get back to that cabin, see how the fire's doing. Try not to fall down either. It's uh, basically chicken cheesesteak, so we're going to cook that up. Get this going. Got a nice roll here. Stopped and got today. Keep that up a little bit, got some cheese. That's already seasoned up as Gary's. It's already got the seasoning in it. You a little after six, so I think it's time to just settle down for a nice movie. Probably hit the bed early tonight. Uh, I think I used up a lot of stress getting up this mountain and uh, sort of worry about getting back down a little bit, so just going to take it easy and relax and uh, have here this is uh, from Knob Creek I'm not sure if you've seen these yet these are kind of the pre-mixed cocktails and bottles you're used to seeing some of those in cans but uh, these are in bottles and this is an old-fashioned got a little ice here I'm gonna put some uh, this Knob Creek old-fashioned over ice kick back and watch a movie here uh, Maybe I'll put one up tomorrow for you to, to take a guess at. Tonight I'm going to watch uh, The Mule with uh, Clint Eastwood and uh, check this out. And uh, never saw it before, so we'll go ahead and do that. And like I said, uh, just kind of relax, kick back like this, and, uh, and just enjoy the evening. So uh, I'll catch you in the morning. And uh, hey, stay warm tonight because we're getting down to about 23, 24. 
So uh, put an extra blanket on yourself. Hey, morning. Morning. Uh, pretty good night last night. Didn't get down as cold as I thought. Cold outside. 20, what do we got? 25. But uh, stayed about 62 in here. I can't, can't beat that. So I had a good fire going last night and then the gas took over. So you know what time it is. It's coffee time, right? Let's get some coffee going. We'll do a couple things in the blue pot over here, and uh, I got a couple signs to hang up. Uh, look for some spots or rearrange things, take some things down and put some different things up. Uh, just a couple, just a couple of fishing signs. So uh, we'll do that this morning, and we'll get on to the, uh, the POA Select Seed and uh, get up there to the field and, and get that planted in. And again, there's about four inches or so of snow, and talking with Anthony from uh, POA, he said that's fine it'll actually be nice i'll be able to see where i'm going with the seed and then it'll gradually sink in as it melts and then uh, uh sink into the soil and take off so that's what we're uh, that's what we're looking to happen but more on that later right now coffee time i think i'm going to hold off on breakfast for a bit too i'm just uh, just ready for some coffee about now now well, continuing on with our fish theme uh, so i put a little gun fishing up there next to the deer and uh, that looks pretty good there because you can you can see pretty nice. We'll spin around and uh, over here above Sean's bunk, just put up the rainbow trout. And uh, I left some room back there. Uh, you never know. I'll probably find something else, and I'll, I'll need a little bit of room. I got those up. Uh, just a couple of things I had I'd found. Uh, I usually look in Hobby Lobby and. Yeah, their stock doesn't turn over too often, so uh, I'm always looking for new things. I might put something up here in the blue pot. Uh, yeah, one of these trips up here, I, I saw a nice coffee sign that I thought would, would fit over there pretty well. Move the barbecue sign around a little bit and put a little coffee sign in there, maybe. But uh, yeah, the blue pot's looking pretty nice. And... Uh, everything else here in the cabin. So I think I could have another coffee and, and uh, I think I'm going to get on to like a brunch or a late breakfast this morning. I'm starting to get hungry. So uh, we'll go ahead and do that in a few minutes. Have a nice uh, little Asiago, the cheese Asiago bagel with some egg and a little bacon. That'll, that's going to hit the spot. Yeah, get some bacon warmed up, get that bagel toasted up and you know, we'll put my egg down. This is going to be good. This egg right here, this is a jumbo that uh, I got for $3.49 a dozen. So hopefully your area, some of your, your egg prices are coming down a little bit. Well, that bacon's getting ready quick. It's not going to take long to toast up. Let's get that egg going. Got one of those little silicone things to keep it pretty much in a circle. A little bit leaked out, but that's not an issue. Uh, that bacon is getting ready quick. It's coming together. Let's flip that egg over. Um, that'll be a perfect size for that bagel. POA Pure Outdoor Alliance Seed. This is a, the, the type of seed this one is is Clover Insanity. This has got like six different kinds of clover in it. And I looked over the uh, ingredients, basically what seeds in there. Uh, it's, it's just almost 99% seed. There's coating on a seed, which is good because that, that way we can frost seed it. Uh, but there's, I think 0.04% weed seed in here. So we're, I'm not going to come back and I'm not going to see a bunch of rye coming up or I'm not going to see uh, from this anyway, because I'm not sure if the logger put some seed down on there and if he did, it probably was rye, but it did, it's not coming from here. So this is again, POA Select. 
they give you 30% more seed than this is for an acre. So basically your acre bag, this is, uh, this is eight pounds. Normally you're gonna get six uh, for an acre, uh, but this has a great germination rate too. It's like 30% over the normal germination rate. So I am looking for some good things from this. And again, I appreciate uh, Anthony, you sending this to me and uh, uh, I'm gonna have all the info down below, the link to the website, uh, Anthony's email down there. And uh, if you're in Western PA, Pittsburgh area or so, Anthony will even come out and do a site survey for you. He'll come out and check your ground and uh, give you the tips on what would be best for yours. And again, there's no obligation for this. If you send Anthony a note and you, you, you like it, great. If you don't like it, well, that's up to you. I'm not forcing you to do anything. I'm just saying what I'm using and I'm hoping this is gonna come up great. So again, Pure Outdoor Alliance Clover Insanity is going to go up there on the uh, logging uh, landing area and uh, have my shovel with me. I'm going to get a little soil sample and hopefully I'll get it where the, the dozer wasn't sitting and dripping diesel fuel and uh, oil and hydraulic fluid and things like that because that, uh, that was a, an old mess, that, that skitter. But uh, hey, it did the job, but uh, I know it leaked a little bit around there, so I'm gonna try to get it around the edge or so where, where he, I don't think he was as much. And uh, we'll hopefully we'll get a good soil sample out of that. I'm gonna go in the shed over here, get our spreader out, little hand spreader, get my gloves, and uh, we'll go up to the landing area. Let's take a walk. Got my soil sample from a couple different spots out there. Uh, I have, uh, I think I have it at home, or I'll check the cabin. I'm pretty sure it's at home, but I'll go ahead and uh, Send that away when I get home. And I got the, uh, the spreader filled up, or halfway filled up. And uh, we'll just go back and forth of our landing area. And again, this is a little bit smaller than I was thinking. This is more of a, probably about a quarter. But I'm gonna go down a little bit down that way and uh, spread it on a couple of the lanes that are up on the top, uh, up on the logging roads that are on the top that I don't think the it's going to run downhill when it starts uh, melting and things like that. Well, let's get this done. Uh, it's a little nippy out here. Wind's blowing a little bit. Not enough that it's going to blow the seed around, but uh, let's get this going. Doesn't take long, that's for sure. And I think, from what I can see, the seeds spread out pretty nice. This stuff comes up. It's going to look good in here. Uh, it's not a spot where we'd hunt over, but it's, uh, hey, it's nutrition for the deer for uh, the 360 days that we're not looking for them. So, uh, I got a little bit more on this trail over here to do and we'll wrap this up and go back and I think I'm going to put the chains on the, the Jeep today, have that ready for when I take off tomorrow. And I got the Z chains on, it took a little bit and it's been a while since I put them on, like five years so uh, I had to remember how to put them on, but uh, there they are. And uh, you can see the, the cut in the snow come out here a little bit. And you can see the, the marks in the snow as that chain cuts in. I feel a little bit better heading down the mountain tomorrow. I mean, going up is one thing, and it was, uh, the snow was a little, a little damp, so it had a lot of traction to it. It's like when you can make a nice snowman or snowball and not real slippery when it's uh, and it's in the low 20s. But uh, going down, hey, you know, it's it's a, it's far down. I mean, it's like a thousand foot drop. So uh, I don't want to go over the edge or slide into the bank or anything. So put those chains on and uh, I'm gonna take off about the, this time tomorrow and uh, go ahead and get down the, down the hill. I'll take the chains off on the bottom and uh, we'll get on the road again. But it uh, feels good to get that seed down, and uh, hopefully we're even going to have some melding and then some freezing tonight, and melding and freezing, and then I think there's snow coming in over the weekend. and So I think we're going to go through a lot of cycles of uh, thaw and freeze and thaw and freeze, and that way I'll get that seed into the cracks in the ground. So, uh, yeah, that was worth it. I kicked back and... Uh, uh, it's pretty nice out right now. It really doesn't feel bad. I think it's in the mid-30s and uh, no wind.
or to speak of. I mean, there's a little breeze, but uh, nothing major. And I'll sit back and maybe have a cigar and get one of those electrolyte drinks and get some of those back in me again. But uh, nice day right now. A nice day. You know, uh, all right, well, I'm going to get back inside. A couple months back, I got an email from uh, Mark from Philadelphia, and he is in the Coast Guard or Coast Guard Reserves. And uh, he was coming down to the base in Dover, the Air Force base in Dover, to go to the PX or commissary. Uh, I'm not sure what they call it now. I think it's commissary. but um, And he wanted to meet up and uh, hand off a couple things to me. And uh, so I was glad to, glad to meet him. And uh, we met at a local coffee shop and sat there and uh, shot the breeze for about an hour, hour and a half or so. And uh, just talked about different things, uh, the videos, the cabin what he's into, hunting, uh, things, in, all kinds of things in general. Uh, so it was a good meeting, and he left me with a couple things, and, and one of them are going up right now into the, uh, the Blue Pot Cafe, and uh, I have it right here, and uh, let's take a look at a close-up of it. This is a Coast Guard combo cover device, or pin, that's worn by listed personnel, E6 and below. And this was actually Mark's, and uh, I certainly appreciate him giving me that. And uh, he also gave me a coin, where he said he coined me, which uh, I've never, never had that before from a, a service person, and uh, you know, quite an honor as far as I'm concerned. And uh, I appreciate that. This isn't going up on the uh, uh, the wall, but uh, this uh, this beautiful device or pin is, and this was his, as I mentioned. And uh, that's to me having that again and the coin. Quite an honor, Mark, so I really appreciate that. He gave me a nice cigar, which you'll see in a minute, a Deadwood. You've seen me have those before, and uh, he knows I like them. And then some beer I'm going to have this evening. But uh, we're going to take this, uh, his device, and again, this was actually his, and uh, we're going to put it right up under that, uh, that uh, veteran's coin. Um, instead of putting it on the uh, uh, that little board that we have with the with the pot on it, but it's going to be right next to it just because it's nice and big, and I, I think it needed a, a spot to show off. So uh, let's get that up there, and uh, we'll we'll salute Mark and uh, for all his, all his he's done for the country, and again all our servicemen and women, uh, what they do, what they provide for us, and uh, I'm eternally grateful for that. So let's get this pin up now. Up in its proper spot right there. That's a that's a really good spot for that. That uh, that looks really nice. Well, who knows? Maybe some time I'll I'll have some some more under here of something else as this stuff fills up. As long as I'm here to to put them up, I'm going to keep doing it. Absolutely. Well, that looks good up there, Mark. I appreciate that. And uh, like I said, that will be there for years and years and years to come. Saluting our our veterans and current service personnel so again thanks very much and uh, right now i'm going to get on to that cigar that uh, that you were nice enough to also provide light up that cigar that mark gave me again that was the uh the deadwood and uh, if i put my glasses on i can read which one but uh i'll, I'll certainly show it to you and uh, i'm going to sit back and uh you know, smoke that and uh i'm going to be looking at the uh, the ham radio general book uh, I know you, you heard me talk about some ham stuff before, and there's three levels, and I'm just the, the first level or the lower level. I just want to move up so I can do maybe some FT8 or some high frequency at some point uh, in the future, and uh, uh, just something to do, something to, to kind of get my keep my brain working a little bit. So I'm, I'm studying this book, and I'm not sure when I'm going to take the test, but I'm going to kick back, have the cigar, read this little bit and uh, I do have my uh, my portable with me that uh, last night uh, the Tioga County Ham Club was uh, was doing a net and again a net is basically people just come in to say hello and what's going on people talking about the weather and snow and stuff like that up here the wind and uh, somebody had lost power so just a, a little bit of a gathering of people to have a little bit of a conversation. So I stayed on that for about uh, 45, 50 minutes last night, just listening and uh, just saying hello to them. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and have that and, uh, and look at this uh, this afternoon. I really don't feel like doing anything else. Uh, the snow is melting out there fairly nice. 
because uh, we're up to 41 and a half. So we're, uh, we're well above freezing and uh, I can see some things uh, melting, but I'm still glad I put those chains on because like I said, it, you know, we gotta, we gotta go down next time and down, down is a lot worse than going up as far as I'm concerned. So uh, we'll go ahead and, and look at this and uh, yeah, then we'll get into some, uh, some nice deer stew later. And uh, that's going to be really good. And I know after I have that and I simmer it for a little while, probably simmer it for a half hour at least, if not more, it's already cooked as far as the stew. It's canned. You'll see that again, but uh, I'm just going to let it simmer in there and reduce a little bit. And that's going to be, that's going to be excellent. So, uh, your marks, thanks for the cigar. I'll look at this, have a little electrolyte beverage and uh, sip on a little coffee over here too and uh, we'll catch it for dinner. All right, back in the kitchen again. So, must mean dinner time, about 5.03. So let this, let's get this going. Let me get a couple ingredients back here. Here you go, this is some deer. This is canned and deer roast you can see it's actually from 20 so uh good time to use it up this is deer broth this is actually deer stock from the the wife made both of these and can them up pressure cooker so i'll be popping lids on this and throwing them in next couple things here we got we got some uh, canned vegetables we got some kinder stew seasoning and some dehydrated uh, celery and onion so we'll go ahead and throw that in. I'll let that simmer for like half hour or so. Because you already got using deer broth, so you're going to have a good flavor. This is going to give it a good flavor. So uh, we'll get this going, and uh, we'll, see, we'll see how we make out along the way. A uh, little, little uh, salad to go with it, maybe a piece of bread. And uh, that should make a pretty good, pretty good dinner. So let's, uh, let's get that done. And you heard that pop. You know it's sealed up. little fat in there. Throw that in. Oh, let's wipe that pot out first just in case it's been sitting around getting dusty. And in you go. Probably add a little water to that. And our deer stock, let's pop that too. And you heard a nice seal break on that one also. Nice, nice. A little water in there to get some of the rest of that out. That can't hurt. And I'm just going to dump everything in, water and everything, just because I need a little bit extra. There we go. All right. Close up of the Kinder Stew seasoning. A lot of carrots in there, huh? Yeah, a lot of nice deer in there too, though. All right, let's get this let's get this boiling, and uh, then we'll turn it down, let it simmer for a little bit. Well, here's the dinner for tonight, and we got our deer stew. We got some garlic uh, bread there, toasted garlic bread, Caesar salad, and. Uh, this was also from Mark. This is some of that beer that he sent down also. That, and I really appreciate that. So I'm going to have a little beer. And i got a couple mounds over there for the dessert. But uh, that's a good looking dinner right there. Well, that was a great dinner. Uh, for, that, for some reason, the stew up here really seems to hit the spot. Cook had the stew last time for, for deer season. And I uh, uh, wanted to do a little stew myself. And it uh, turned out good. It was a lot faster making it, that's for sure. But uh, it both were good and uh, enjoyed that with the salad and the, the garlic bread and everything. So that was great. So I'm going to kick back, watch a movie. And if you noticed, uh, I haven't been saying anything about The Wire this trip. Uh, when Sean was down for Christmas, I had the DVD sitting next to the player. And he said, oh, you're, you're watching The Wire or you're binging on The Wire or something. And, and then my wife said, oh, you know, we talked about it a little bit, what it was about. And she said she wanted to watch it with me. So we've been watching that together and I've uh, been enjoying that. Uh, it's a great series and, uh, you know, well-written and uh, funny and depressing at the same time. And, you know, on how people have to live and 
uh, collateral damage and things like that. But, uh, you know, very well written. And uh, we've certainly been enjoying it. And she said she may want to watch Deadwood uh, after we're done. And uh, we'll see. As I know, Deadwood has a little bit more graphic violence in it than, uh, than The Wire does, if that's hard to believe. But it's, it's, if you've watched both, you'll know it's a little bit more, it's a little bit more uh, uh, over the top. And uh, we'll see. We'll see. You know, she can catch an episode or two and see if she likes it. But uh, we've been enjoying watching The, the Wire together. I watched The Mule last night, uh, Clint Eastwood. And, you know, it's kind of funny. You, you see Clint Eastwood and playing as somebody in his 90s and frail. And, you know, you think back to all those westerns and how macho he was at that point. And, you know, it gives you a, a little uh, glimpse into your own mortality, I guess. But uh, enjoyed it. Was uh, was well done. So I'm gonna uh, put another one on, and uh, not gonna say what it is, but I'm gonna put a frame in here and see if you can guess this one. And for those that didn't watch the fire pit chat, yeah, that was Joe Kidd was the was the last uh, one I had in there in the solo deer camp, and that was that was a bit of a layup. Uh, that was a, kind of an easy one, but uh, I kind of wanted to give you an easy one, and I enjoyed watching Joe Kidd again. So uh, you'll see if you can catch this one, and uh, uh, I've heard good things about it, and we'll have to see. And uh, we're, we're going to just put this on. It's about 6.30 now. It was a pretty good night last night. Enjoyed that movie. Uh, it was kind of a, a, a segment in time, and uh, some things that I didn't know about or... Uh, was a little bit more complicated than I guess I uh, realized. And uh, we just uh, enjoyed it. Uh, you know, not a lot of action or anything like that, but uh, like I said, more of a more of a tale of a person and uh, that, that certain window in time that, uh, that brought him from relative obscurity uh, to, a, to a high position and then back to obscurity again. So it was a good night last night uh, after the movie and uh, just slipped into bed there and uh, stayed nice and warm. Didn't even need an extra quilt last night. It was, it was pretty nice in there and didn't really have the heat up that high. But uh, it was good sleeping. Well, this morning got up, just had some coffee and some Pitzels. For those of you familiar with the old Pitzels, and when I have that, that brings back some good memories of my, my mom and my grandmom and uh, cooking the old Pitzels on the on the stove and eating them warm <laughs> very good memory so uh had some of them and then i uh a viewer from sean's last video where he did a, a hike out of, from the cabin here and then went up the hill and down and camped over there and then came back uh, he showed a little bit of the cabin in there and uh, one of the guys had mentioned that our co2 detector was up too high so i moved that uh, as you can see down a little bit lower and it was up where those candles were and uh, so I hope that's in a good spot right there at least it's probably about four and a half foot height now and uh, I didn't want to put it over near the stove and I didn't want to put it over near any doors or anything got false readings so I, I hopefully that's a good spot for it uh, so that's about it and I straightened up this morning I got all my stuff ready to pack up and I'll probably be leaving in an hour, hour and a half or so. Temps up to about 30, and I'm hoping they said it's supposed to get partly sunny. I don't, I don't see any real sun yet, but uh, hopefully it'll, it'll get just a little bit warmer, and uh, and it'll warm up, and uh, this, the snow will start to. It's still pretty grippy, so I think I'm going to be fine going down the mountain. But hey, you always want to, you every factor to be in your favor. A little dirty here from some chains on yesterday. But uh, now I'm going to head back over to the pit. And I'm very surprised that I haven't gotten any pictures. And I hear some from you know a few weeks back. They were all over it. And I'm not sure, again, I'm not sure if that colder weather or that front and the snow moved in and they kind of went to lower, uh, lower uh, elevation to avoid some of this. And... Uh, uh, they'll be back, I know, but uh, one of those items from uh, Tractor Supply and have the, uh, what is this, Antler King uh, Lick Magic. Basically, uh, probably you call it a, uh, a Lucky Buck uh, copycat. I'm not sure which one came first, but uh, 
Got this for 15 at Tractor Supply end of year. And then went back, I think to another store. I was actually able to get two more of those for 10 bucks each. So that averages out to about, what, 12 or so for each one. And that's not bad at all. And uh, I'm going to go spread that up there on that stump and uh, let them eat the stump and then we come back and uh, probably put half a bucket, half a bucket, half a bucket for the, for the rest of the year. So that's, uh, that'll be nice. I still have a few more buckets left at home and I'll bring them up when I can. So let's get over the, to the pit over there and we'll dump this in and uh, we'll see if anything comes back. I mean, I'm sure they will because they were, they've been hitting it hard and, oh yeah, check out this picture of this bobcat. If he would have had his face towards the camera, that would just been about almost a perfect shot. But I'll take it. That's a nice big bobcat. And, uh, yeah, nice. Really, really nice to see that. There's <laughs> flying north already. And that's about the direction they're going, so, huh. Well, maybe they know something I don't. Maybe winter is almost over. You know, there's the block, the Black Ops block and the Black Ops mineral. And uh, here's our stump that they've been chewing on for a couple years now. Now, uh, I'm going to go ahead and dump this right over it. And I can smell it. There we go. Yeah, similar to Lucky Buck. Not quite as strong, I think. But uh, let's see what this does. Yeah. There we go. All right, well, this is down. So uh, go back and start loading the car up and we'll get down that hill. There we are, 1033. I'll be leaving in about 10 minutes or so or less. 35 almost 36 so again the snow is softening a little bit get a better grip and then one of the last things we got to do here turn off that gas tank outside as i sell propane and propane accessories so we know hank would be pretty pissed off if we left that gas on so i'm going to go turn that off finish loading up and uh let's get down the mountain yeah that was a good trip a short trip uh Still have to get down off the mountain, and uh, but good trip. Got that seeding done, and uh, probably get a camera in that field. Have to come back, uh, get that soil analyzed. Probably put some lime and fertilizer down. So that'll probably be the next thing. But it'll, it'll, it'll be around spring trip time or so. Uh, not sure. Have to talk to the guys about spring trip. So let's get down off this mountain, but for now, it's White Rook 85. Everybody take care and thanks for coming along with me. I'll catch you next time.